Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to Move with Joe. In today's video, we will be discussing three tactics to use to reduce back stiffness. Now, before we get started, please, in the comment box, list a thing or two that you do that creates back stiffness or tension throughout your day and maybe a strategy that you've used to help reduce the amount of tension. Because ideally, we get more and more ideas, thoughts, in terms of different strategies have worked for you because one strategy that works for one person doesn't necessarily work for the next. So the bigger we can have our toolbox, the better that collectively we'll be able to help individuals. So the first one is to move more frequently. This is a basic movement principle, a biological necessity for us. All of our systems evolved to move, our cardio system, our nervous system, our muscular system. And when they don't move, things begin to atrophy. And so each of our systems has an optimal amount of movement that is necessary for them to be healthy, right? So the American Heart Association has a standard cardio daily recommendation. Our muscular strength needs a certain amount of input for it to continue to build and grow. These things are basic biological necessities where if we don't do them, things start to degrade. And, and movement is just a basic necessity of life. You can't have life without movement. And so if we're not moving our bodies, we're not going to maintain an ideal sense of freedom, flexibility, fluidity in our body. So rule number one is to get up frequently and don't stay in the same position for long periods of time. There's really no way around getting out of stiffness if you're maintaining the same position for a long period of time. All right, so if I am bent over like this, my back muscles are going to start stiffening up because they are engaged in a prolonged contraction holding me upright. If I'm holding out something in my hand like this, my musculature in my biceps and anterior deltoid are gonna to begin to get fatigued and tire and start to feel discomfort or tension. All right, so the second tactic is increasing variation. Now, most of us, because of developing habits, we begin to move in the same repetitive ways, which is great in terms of being more efficient, not having to think about movements. But the downside is if we are only moving in those same repetitive ways, then other options, other things that uh, used to be available in terms of our nervous system and connection of movement become less optimal. And so ideally what we wanna do is be introducing a variety of different movements throughout our week, throughout our day, to elicit a broader ability to adapt to the changing environment around us. So for example, um, if I am a runner and I am just running in the sagittal plane, running forward, I am developing my hip flexors, my extensors, uh, I'm getting some, a little bit of rotation in the upper body, but I'm not getting too much lateral plane motion, right? Um, I'm not getting much diagonal plane motion. So developing the capacity to move in all sorts of different directions, flexion, extension, hanging, swinging, rotating, lunging, squatting. These are the, all the variations of functional movements that we evolved doing for thousands and thousands of years as a human species. So these are integral to creating more adaptability and reducing that tension that accumulates when we do the same repetitive movement over and over again. So maybe you've gone on a 100 mile sentry ride on your bike. Depending on how adapted you are to doing that activity, you may start noticing some tension after 10 miles, 20 miles, 50 miles. But ultimately, if you maintain a position on a bicycle for a long period of time, eventually, at some point, depending on how, how well you've adapted to that position, you will start feeling tension. So we need variety, variety, we need variation in order for our bodies to feel well. All right, so the third tactic is awareness, developing more body awareness of how we organize, how we move more effectively and efficiently in our body. And in order to do that, we need to start paying attention to sensory awareness or sensory inputs within ourselves, how we organize, where is, where is our weight? How do, we, how do we distribute force evenly through the body? And that's something that most of us have desensitized. You know, even from a, uh, being a young child, being put into a seat at a school where you have to sit for you know, six, seven hours a day and be still and be quiet, 
our bodies, like I mentioned earlier, weren't evolved to be sitting still for that long. And so even as a young kid, we start feeling achy, we start feeling tense, but we have to desensitize ourselves to those feelings because otherwise we'll get in trouble by making noise or um, drawing too much attention from the teacher. So we've, over time, throughout our whole lives, have desensitized ourselves to sensations. Wearing clothing or shoes that create a particular style but aren't very functional, aren't comfortable, squeeze our feet into ski boots to get a certain amount of stiffness. There's all sorts of different things that we do that we start not paying attention to particular areas of our body that uh, over time can lead to outcomes that aren't great. Um, and this is particularly true for athletes who um, have trained for years and years not to feel pain so that they can keep pushing harder. And that's, that's great from athletic performance, but it can also have a, a downside, something that comes back to, to catch up with us later on in terms of not paying attention to some of those movement patterns that might not be contributing to uh, our overall health and efficiency in how we move. All right, so to summarize, we have three different tactics, moving more frequently, creating more variation in our movement, and creating more awareness around our movement. And one of the great things about the awareness through movement process is that it really combines all of those into a package where you can do anywhere from shorter lessons, 15, 20 minute lessons I've been posting online, to longer hour long uh, lessons and even entire week long series to develop more awareness, increase efficiency and decrease that tone and tension that we get from being in the same static positions or postures for long periods of time. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Check out my other videos on posture, mobility, movement awareness. A lot of those videos will actually target some of the things, the, the three tactics that we talked about today. And we'll see you next time.